Hello everyone. Today uh, we'll endeavor to study hydrogen bond. Now this topic is uh, uh, important to understand because this keeps coming all the way along the course of organic, and so it deserves to be given a separate lecture. So the study will not delve very deep into it, but we'll be studying how much uh, is required out of us to understand rest of the topic of organic chemistry. Now to understand it better, let's understand from the basic what actually a bond is, then we'll come to what hydrogen bond is. If we talk about methane, CH4, methane has four bonds between carbon and hydrogen. Methane has a carbon, carbon has four electron in its outermost shell and those four electrons are separately shared by four hydrogen atoms and that's how in elementary class you have been learned to show a covalent bond. Later on in class 11 when you studied the wave nature of electron you have been taught about orbitals and you have been taught actually electron reside in orbitals like this and the sharing of electron is like this and now you understand that there's a wave electronic wave between the nucleus of two atoms like this and those electronic wave are being attracted by the nucleus of those two, two atoms so effectively what a bond is you have two nucleus having plus charge and you have some electronic density in between them those electronic density depending upon the strength of the bond are free enough to move or to project a little bit out of that bond if that is a weak bond this projection will be sufficient enough to participate in hyperconjugation if that's a strong bond this projection will be very less and we will not consider the effect to be pronounced enough so that these electronic density will move out really into insignificant amount into orbital of different atom nevertheless this is the condition this is the scenario you having two blocks of positive charge sandwiching a wave of negatively charged electronic density now the strength of the bond will depend upon the attraction of the system attraction of this sandwiched electronic density by two nucleuses the attraction will be more if the charge is more the charge will be more if the nucleus is bigger so generally bigger atoms form strong bonds small atom like hydrogen forms a weak bond apart from the charge on the nucleus the force of attraction will also depend upon the amount of electronic wave present here the more the negative charge the more will be attraction by two electronic two positively charged nucleuses and hence strong will be the bond so if you have more electronic density here the bond will be stronger that's the whole idea of a bond a bond is mere attraction of electronic wave by a positive center that is nucleus so this is prima facie what a bond is and this is how we should visualize a bond now extending this idea of attraction of electronic wave with nucleus or positively charged atoms we can go ahead to talk about a situation in which we have a positive center getting attracted by a electron rich center for example suppose there is a bond between hydrogen and an atom A. This A can be any atom depending upon the condition required and later on we'll be seeing what will be the conditions imposed on A but somehow there's a bond between A and H that bond happens to be such that there's a sufficient amount of electronic density on A and plus charge density on H. That means there is sufficient amount of electron being pulled towards A making a hydrogen sufficiently electron deficient now this kitty hydrogen this small hydrogen is being robbed in terms of electronic density by atom A making that kitty hydrogen sufficiently electronic deficient now this kid will ask for help from big brothers outside in the system suppose this atom B either having a negative charge or having a lone pair that means having a pair of electron either its own or from outer source that means either a pair 
or a negative charge nevertheless it has some electron it is rich in electron making some other bonds as well we are not concerned about them right now but this atom b have uh, is rich in electron has high electronic density now this outcry from hydrogen for electrons and this big bro is rich in electron so there will be like hyperconjugation like inductive effect like resonance some electronic transition that means some of the electron from this electron rich site will come out no matter in whatever less quantity will definitely come out to fulfill the requirement of this poor kid hydrogen because it is electron deficient now if we extend or if we recapitulate or if we connect with the idea discussed a moment before whenever you have electronic wave between two centers that's a bond whenever you have a two complete electronic wave corresponding to two electrons we call it as a covalent bond this cannot be called as a covalent bond because the electronic wave between these two atoms will not correspond to two complete electrons rather this will be very little electronic wave so we can't call it as a covalent bond but nevertheless there will be some attraction between these two atoms and uh, specifically technically we have coined a term which will be using rigorously later on that will be hydrogen bond but let's not quite uh, start using that word let's call it a kind of attraction a kind of bond but not covalent bond definitely the energy of this bond will be much lesser than covalent bond because a covalent bond has much higher electronic density than this one is having so the attraction of these two nucleuses will be much lesser obviously so the energy of the bond will be much lesser so it will be less less uh, stronger much less stronger than a covalent bond but its strength will be strong enough to be considered as a factor to decide the path of the reaction and the major product or any other electronic feature like acidity basicity solvation if the electronic wave here is sufficient now when this electronic wave would be sufficient enough the electronic wave would be sufficient enough when the plus charge density the deficiency in electron in this hydrogen would be enough when there will be more deficiency in this hydrogen then there will be more fulfillment of the density electronic density from the outer source so more electronic density will gush into this orbital bringing in more amount of electronic wave between two nucleuses and when there will be more like amount of electronic wave between two nucleuses the bond will be stronger so the first criteria that we are considering is to form a strong enough bond like this because you know if even if there's a slight very slight positive charge there will be very slight electronic density and that very slight electronic density will bring about a very small or a very weak force of attraction and that will not really fall into a a factor that will not become a factor that will, will be worth worth studying or worth even considering while studying or looking at a reaction like you know if we talk about gravitational force when a small cricket ball f falls towards earth due to gravity the ball comes down theoretically balls also applies some force on the earth which due to which the earth should have moved upward but that force is so so little compared to the humongous mass of the earth that we don't consider those forces similarly if you have a very little amount of electronic density here force will be very weak so we will not be considering that to have a considerable amount of force or to have a considerable strong bond the electronic wave between two nucleuses should be in sufficient amount and the electronic wave would be in sufficient amount if there's a call for a sufficient amount of electronic density and there'll be a call for electronic density if there is deficiency so the first point that we will we will start to appreciate in this topic is such kind of external bonding or external assistance will come or bond due to external assistance will be formed when you have a sufficient deficiency on hydrogen that's the first criteria that will uh, come up for the condition of this bond that will be later will be called as hydrogen bond 
now uh, and then in turn that deficiency of course will be there when there will be sufficient amount of removal of electronic wave away from hydrogen and this pulling up this atom which is pulling away the electron must be ele sufficiently electronegative to pull away sufficient amount of electronic wave away from this hydrogen making this sufficiently electron deficient so in turn this factor boils down to a factor that this atom a must be sufficiently electron negative so if it is sufficiently electron negative it will create sufficient amount of electron deficiency on this hydrogen so if we have to jot down the condition in which this bond will be formed first condition would be atom to which this hydrogen and i'm calling this atom a atom a must be sufficiently electronegative most electronegative atom is fluorine followed by oxygen followed by nitrogen followed by chlorine the this four order we must must know fluorine oxygen nitrogen chlorine and this is followed by other atoms like sulfur phosphorus bromine iodine but this is the most common four elements you encounter in organic and you must know that's one thing second thing that you have to appreciate is when this atom is bringing an electronic density to this hydrogen hydrogen is a small atom it has only one shell right so this is the smallest atom in the periodic table when you have a small atom having small orbital and if you have a big atom having a big orbital then the distance between the tip of these two orbitals become sufficiently high and then the electronic transfer because you know i have drawn this pure p orbital but hybridized orbital is asymmetric like this it is more bulged and broader towards the end so most of the electronic density resides towards the end so the end distance will be large if the difference in the size is more so the amount of electronic density that can be facilitated to diffuse into this orbital will be less and that's the reason why we have a weak bond between two atoms of with large difference in size if we talk about hbr bond hbr bond is very weak because h is kiddy small bromine is large so the dis difference in size brings about less electro overlapping hydrogen is a small right and bromine will be big so the overlapping would be very less if this atom would have been bigger then overlapping would have been greater bringing about more strength in the bond so if there's a size difference then the bond is weak bond is weak because the sharing sharing of electron becomes difficult same would be the case here if b atom is very large compared to this hydrogen then the electronic wave sufficient amount of electronic wave would not come into uh, the orbital of hydrogen making the electronic wave between two nucleuses again less so if you again if you want to have sufficient amount of electronic wave between these two atom so that there is a strong enough bond formed between these two atom what we require is the size of b should not be very large compared to hydrogen so difference in size of this atom b i'm calling this as b the external atom which is giving the electron i'm calling it as b size difference in size of b and hydrogen must not be large right so these two factors if these two factors are there if these two factors are fulfilled then a bond will be formed here that will be having sufficient strength to be considered as a factor to study organic reaction that can be a strong player deciding the pathway of the reaction and the major product as well so actually what we are doing is we are warming up for the reaction mechanism once we starting start the reaction mechanism in full fledged these factors going to come again and again and th these factors apart together with other factors 
are going to decide the pathway of the reaction, the major product. That's what organic is all about, the major product. So then we'll be going with little, very fast. I'll say this is a hydrogen bonding. So this is really the part of reaction. This is a hydrogen bonding. So this product is major. I want to explain much things. So whatever has to be understood. It's here is the time to understand those things.